Oh, Fortnite, like, yeah. I like, tried to get into Fortnite. Yeah. And it's what just was wrong with that? It's like too cartoony spot. for you? It's, I love cartoony stuff. I think it's the bat, battle royale aspect of it. You <laughs> we know, can you tell to... by your pants. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um... But no, that game is just like, it's not my jam, bro. No. It's a good game. It's just yeah. not for me, bro. The Do you like whole... games like it? or No, not really. One, you have to be online to play it, right? Now, with something like Overwatch, that makes sense. Or like Destiny 1 or 2, that makes sense. But like with Fortnite, I played it, I enjoyed it, then I put it down and never picked it back up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man, so you, um, I'm pretty sure you, it was you, but it could have been Jacques. You, th you gave me a game in... I, middle school had been middle school yeah uh, it was probably playstation maybe playstation 2 i don't remember when those came out i mean this was 15 20 years ago yeah um but it was like an anime game and you, we just you which ran around like a there's probably different levels but it mm -hmm. just ran around with a sword and i'm pretty sure you just chopped people up <laughs> i wish i remember the game i was telling bill about it the other day yeah. like this was like probably the last time i was into video games i was yeah. like i wish i remember the game but you just ran around it was kind of it seemed pointless at the time mm. but it was such a fun game right and i i, I wish i remember what it was because i was yeah. trying to tell him about it and now i'm trying to tell you about it like yeah you remember this asian game you gave me <laughs> it'll come through when, when you're not thinking about it right up your alley a uh, quick question in this game was there a whole lot of opponents that you had to face and you could just swing a sword and yes. destroy 30 at a time yeah yeah i believe it's called dynasty, dynasty warriors. warriors yes yeah. that's what it okay. was yeah um, nice <laughs> and uh i i think it was you who gave me the game to play it might have been and it just seemed like it that was what it was like in middle school like we were yeah. drawing like anime characters mm -hmm. and, and into that so i think that's had to have been that's what it was you, it. so you, you played it oh yeah i got right. down on some dynasty warriors they were, they were really fun games i might i just might not have ever been like that big into video games that i knew like that it was a popular game or anything yeah but like the Elden Ring thing, right. the Dark Souls, like I've never heard of those. But like mm. everyone I talk to, you and and mm. you and, and Jerry now and some other people, like they're all super into it. Yeah. And uh, and and Bill too. So we want we want a YouTube just binge on like all of those games and mm -hmm. like there's like hidden meanings of what they're about. Um, <laughs> I know there there is a it's like Hollywood. Yeah, and like know? Bloodborne, it was. Uh, and I don't know if this is a true thing, but we watched a very long theory video on it. Um, but it was about like the dark past of modern medicine, like mm. how it got there and like, you know, shady doctors or just doing experimental surgeries and, and yeah. stuff like that. Again, like it could have just been like one theory and it might, might not be a real thing, but it fit every box. Like wow. everything was checked off and it compared so many things in that game mm. to like just crazy medicine medical tactics back in the day that's why like how it got into people like sawing limbs off and experimental wow. medicine and all this it's pretty crazy that's why really fun to watch if you have youtube time to kill I, I i make youtube time to kill there you go you know that'd be good yeah so while while we're early enough in this podcast we're going to start it off by introducing mr justin williams a real jack of all trades here in anchorage mm -hmm. uh tons of things going around big public figure He's got a, a food vlog, I guess you call it. Justin yeah. Alaska's Eats yeah. goes around different local restaurants for the most part. Once in a while, you're throwing a um, more of like a chain one, but to Rarely, review, just but... something really small. Yeah. Um, but again, super rare. Uh, mostly focused on just real hidden gems in Anchorage or Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, what, JW Design is yeah. that the graphic the design? Graphic design yeah. edits podcasts for people himself. Uh, I'm gonna say. You know, you could quote me on this. One of the top two podcast edit editors I know. Uh, yes. I happen to have the one of the other top two behind the camera today, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mr. Drew McCowan, also Alaska's number one home inspector. <laughs> uh, what what am I what am I missing? I, I know I'm missing something. Uh, oh, your own podcast, yeah, the Super, Super Tangent, Tangent podcast. Let's talk about that. It's all about comic books, right? Comic books, nerdy stuff, things that you know i was basically raised on yeah. fandoms video games like we were just talking yeah. about and this isn't like the comic book stuff of today like the marvel cinematic universe i talk about that a little bit just because i'm i'm kind of addicted to those movies they're, they're great movies and i love but, them and that's what really got me back into like the whole comic book thing yeah but this is more about like the actual comics and like yeah. the earlier stuff before like right before you know the cinematic 
universe was even a thing. Yeah. This is going back to like the old school comics yeah. and all those different stories you could get out of those, which, you know, would never even have time to tell and to put yeah. it into theaters and do it correctly. And do it correctly. That's kind yeah. of the thing. And and now the films have so much source material to pull from because every hero has died and been resurrected. Yeah. Every hero has 300 different origin stories now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of nice because the movies really just simplify things. They're just like, oh, this is how things were one way, and that's just the way that they are. Yeah. And you can always go back to the source material, to the comic books and the graphic novels and the blah, 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 to see what's accurate and what's not yeah. accurate, right? But there's so many things. Like, there's so, like I said, there's so many different stories out there now. So many. Like, I mean, it could be accurate. It could like, be. Like, how many different stories and versions of the Hulk are there? There's, right. like, their Professor Hulk, which they brought mm -hmm. into the cinematic yeah. universe. But you know what would have been better than Professor Hulk? Hmm. Worldbreaker Hulk. If Thanos just tried to kill him and he just he just came and killed everybody. They they wouldn't dare. They messed the Hulk up so bad, dude. Yeah, they did by changing him into Professor Hulk and but they never I, even did. I mean, actually, no. I didn't mind the uh, that Edward Norton. Oh yeah, Hulk, no, not at all. Um, that was pretty good. That first one. I didn't really like the. Uh, what was that first guy? Uh, Mark Ruffalo or no? He's the newest one. Oh, Eric um, Banner. Banner. Yeah, in I two thousand three. Banner for some reason. I know I'm, <laughs> Banner, I'm right? Yeah, yeah, Bruce Banner. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I didn't necessarily care for that one, but I really did enjoy the Edward Norton one. That was it. Was a lot better in yeah. my opinion. I just wish that they had because I really care about continuity, and so it was really weird when they switched his actor out for Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. It was weird when they switched uh, Terrence Howard out for Don Cheadle as War Machine. That was weird, and it's still weird. That's one that's still weird. Like I do yeah. enjoy Mark Ruffalo, and I. I think he's better suited for the whole Marvel universe than maybe Edward Norton is. I would agree. Um, and I love Edward Norton. Don't get me wrong. He's like, top five for me. Yeah. I yeah, love Edward um, Norton. What was the movie with him and Richard Gere? Uh, Primal Fear. Primal Fear. One of the best movies ever. Excellent. Like, Excellent. And movie. we won't get into all the details about American History X, but <laughs> for the character, <laughs> yeah. like his acting in it, yeah. it was great. And he's a great actor. And then he's been in some real real downers too um, yes stone and whatnot yes yeah, but i do enjoy mark ruffalo as the hulk yeah um i i enjoyed edward norton as the hulk too but maybe not for like a whole series right um but right. yeah the, the don saying. Cheadle one from terrence howard is a it's big one weird. and it's still it's still weird every time i watch it now <laughs> like i was like this just isn't right and and don't get me wrong yeah. i like don don too he's been yeah, in some yeah. great movies too but he's not terrence howard that's a night and day different one. Yeah, yeah if you would have started as don Cheadle. I've been perfectly fine. Right, with it. right. But you can't start as Terrence Howard. Terrence and, Howard of all people. And then you go to Don Cheadle. The like only similarity one, between them is that they're both black. Yeah, that's it. And not even, not even the same black. Not I mean, even the gonna, same. We're going to say that. <laughs> we're just going to go out there and say that. Milk yep. chocolate, mocha latte. Yeah, and, it's not the same and thing. they're not even like close to the same actors. At like all. Like the way they say things and their attitude and their demeanor. Like yeah. they're just totally different. They're radically different. They were both in the film Crash, um, which was like. <sighs> Early two thousand. I remember. I remember Don Cheadle in Don in Cheadle Crash. was in it. Terrence was also in it. He had like a the political wife, or was he in politics? I don't recall. I just both know... of those could be wrong. I could have made that up. Just now. <laughs> well, it was. It, it did have a lot of like uh, police, cor not police corruption in it, but the police department. Because Don Cheadle was either a cop or a detective in it. Yeah. So there was a big element of that in there. But and and there was an encounter with police officers and Terrence Howard. And Terrence just like went off on them, yeah. and 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 the whole suspense aspect of it was we thought Terrence Howard's character was going to get killed by the cops, right? Yeah, which is a really a really big narrative in America where yeah, you know, so, so so this movie was based on real life, basically it was <laughs> based on true story, yeah, yes, basically. Saying. But yeah, watching Terrence Howard and Don Cheadle in the same movie. Two radically different actors. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, so yeah, you can't just swap them out like that. Yeah, it was weird. there's certain ones in there, but and like and like maybe they just thought like it was okay because he wasn't such a big role, right? But still, he was like in that movie in Iron mm -hmm. Man, he was like within like the top three guys. Like, Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, like uh, Happy played you know probably a bigger role, but like right mm -hmm. behind that, it was him, like was the him. best friend, right? And all that. It's a tough one to soon to be out. War Machine. Yeah, soon to be War Machine. I remember or Iron it, Patriot because War ugh, Machine was too rough. That was a terrible decision. Yeah, I hated that Iron because I, like at the time they 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 couldn't get the rights to Spider Man, but Iron Patriot's originally is Norman Osborn. 
in the comic yeah. books. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I just hate that they wasted that because now we do have Spider-Man in yeah. the MCU. And they ha- if they had waited, that we would have been able to see like a comic yeah. book accurate Iron Patriot. They're coming back just... around. Uh, I feel like they have time to come back around to it. And Spider-Man, I feel mm. like one that has so many different stories to it. Like you could yes. come around. I mean, how many t- how many different Spider-Man have there been? Right. You know, like they could easily go on to their fourth or fifth different Spider-Man yeah. and just start the whole thing over if and, they and go to. that route. Uh, fun fact, I only reason I know that uh, the Green Goblin was uh, Iron Patriot mm. is from an old podcast that, that I watch now called Kill Tony. If uh, <laughs> if you guys have never seen that, start from the beginning. Kill Tony? What did oh, Tony it's, do? <laughs> it's the best, man. Um, but they had this guy... Uh, he came off as, I think it was more of a joke at first, but yeah. they brought him on every episode to work security because he showed up in this crazy uh, special ordered Iron Patriot costume. Oh, wow. And it was like fiberglass. He had to order it special from like some different country. Oh, wow. And the guy was a real weirdo. But um, <laughs> they brought him on and he would stand at the door and he couldn't move. I, like, I yeah. don't think anything actually really moved like really nice where he could sit mm-hmm. down or it really... Wasn't- easily be Joints mobile didn't work <laughs> um and then he always threw that out there but like yeah i don't know if you guys know this but uh osborne was actually iron patriot and, mm. and, and all that so yeah just a fun fact yeah watch kill tony it's every monday night it's the best i like it uh it's tony hinchcliffe the comedian mm-hmm. uh and he just has this really cool thing he does and yeah, uh, like I said every Monday they'll put it out, and it's him on stage, and it's just a bunch of comedians. The names get drawn out of a bucket. They get yeah. one minute to do their thing, hmm. and then they interview him at the end. I like Super that. cool, yeah. I you like should that check format. it out. It's it's really fun, and he's got it down packed. Like they're you know almost six hundred episodes in. It's been wow. going on for like ten years. It's oh, like okay. right behind okay. Joe Rogan. I was just I, that's the first person I was and, thinking. Of. I was like, um, he's been on for a while. Yep, yeah, but uh, yeah. it's it's great. They have their own funny things they do every week that you expect or yeah. something you expect them to say or they have regulars on too so it's pretty fun Kill it Tony, out. okay but yeah fun fact that's how i know i, like I would it. i would never know if it wasn't for that <laughs> but yeah you would know because i would know you're the host of the super tangent podcast and that's the kind of stuff that i like to get into you know but also too like it kind of all started with with this idea of like wanting to talk about the things that i like uh, even more than comic books, uh, movies, yeah. because they're so much more readily accessible. You get movies yeah. anywhere. You can really only get comic books at comic book shops, right? Yeah. So uh, I love uh, cinema. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a you know a really big lover of of you know the movies, and uh, I just wanted to try to like talk about movies in a more uh, not sophisticated, but more philosophical, societal, yeah. sociological kind of way where I can break down a film. And not just review it because everyone does that. That's an oversaturated yeah. thing. But like, what does this movie personally mean to me? Yeah. So like, my guilty pleasure, for example, Fast and the Furious. This movie suck. They're they're terrible <sighs> movies, but I love them. Yes. Oh, okay. I so love I'm, them. I'm right? with you. They do suck. They're so stupid, especially now. God. But <laughs> the first, and this could only be from a, and they're not comedies at all. But this could be from like a comedic aspect. Yeah. They're two of the funniest movies. The first two movies. Especially the second one. It is too so fast, goofy. Too Ejecto Sidoka. <laughs> Where'd you get an Evo and all this? Um, you could quote those movies for days. And, days. And good people will get the quote references. Right. Some might not. but um, <laughs> Bad people won't. Bad people won't. <laughs> stay away from them. They're inappropriate people. Um, but like number one. Yeah. Um, they're just two of the greatest movies. Like, mm-hmm. uh, they're I, so much fun. Like, I would watch them, and I probably have seen, especially the first one, so many times. Oh yeah. And like, yes, it's just to the point now. Like, if you can't quote those movies, yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. Get, get out, out of this room yeah. right now. You're blocked. And so, like, I watched that movie, and you know, we make fun of the films now, especially because Vin Diesel. You know, talk about family, family, family. Yeah. You know, but you actually look at the first one. You're like, how could I actually break this down in a way that it relates to me? Yeah. And the way that I, the thing that I got from that was that the, that movie really focused a lot on the. And there's not a whole lot of movies. Well, maybe there are, but not. A, I feel like not a whole lot of movies that focus on the. Uh, like the platonic relationship between two men, right? Yeah. And so you have well, Drew's favorite movie, Brokeback Mountain, does. Oh well, that goes a little, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little deeper. Yeah. Uh, right up the rear, if you will. Uh, yeah, real. Deep. Um, but uh, with <laughs> with Fast and the Furious, you you kind of have like these two guys. Uh, you know, you have Paul Walker and you have Vin Diesel, and you saw these two guys walking down the street. You think, you know. These are two wildly different. They couldn't possibly be any different. You yeah. Know? But they both represent two uh, really incredible and valid 
aspects of manhood where you kind of have this Paul Walker character. He's kind of like the pretty boy, yeah. you know, at the time, 2001, you know, the undercover cop. And so he's like, yeah, but, you know, I represent whatever I represent. But then you have the bad boy, Vin Diesel, who yeah. never wears like an actual shirt, ripped to the gods. <laughs> For good you know? reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You know, but like, you know, that's like supposed to be like the ultra macho man. And all this stuff, but you put those two together and you see their bond over the movie and it's like, oh, these two guys are the, like two different sides of the same coin. Yeah. And that's a really interesting aspect that you could take about brotherhood, about uh, male relationships and apply it to your life. Yeah. Because it's a really good lesson in accepting the people around you. Where yeah. you don't have to look, you know, we don't have to think alike, have the same faith, have the same... Uh, family dynamics or beliefs or whatever, but we could be the best of friends. Yeah. Because we have that common denominator because there's trust and empathy. Yeah. You know, and so I can get on the Super Tangent podcast and talk about Fast and Furious in those regards and then talk about how stupid Tyrese is in Too Fast, Too Furious. I right? was just, that's the whole time I, that every time you're talking about like, uh, the bond between two people and couldn't be any different. I, all I thought about was Paul Walker and Tyrese. It, that time. that was just bad. Yeah, they reconciled a, that a little bit with the fifth movie, where they finally brought all the casts of Fast One, Two, and Three, and yeah. Four together. Um, but which I thought was a great idea, and then they threw the Rock in there, which was like even crazier. Yeah. But yeah, dude, they didn't vibe very well. Yeah. It was really forced when they brought everybody in. Oh no! And too fast, too furious. Oh, it was yeah. just weird. It was weird, and um... I felt because I I know they're friends in real life, or were you know before Paul yeah. died, uh, and and so was he and, and Vin Diesel as well. But like, yeah, in that movie, they, everything just felt goofy and yeah. It's like they tried too hard. Like they had, yeah. you know, they had Vin Diesel who was you know the con, mm -hmm. but more like subtle and underground, right. and not necessarily in trouble all the time. Yeah. And then like right, we got to take it up a notch. We're gonna bring Tyrese in. He's actually in prison. <laughs> and he's on an ankle monitor <laughs> and all this and and now you're brothers and right. like it's just like oh come on yeah you had vin diesel already you, know, you, had you didn't need to bring tyrese in they didn't need to make a sequel at all no they didn't but it's but it's, why not like yeah how else are you gonna eventually pull the rock in right yeah, <laughs> yeah now it just the, the I'm not, and I, zero like sense. i haven't seen maybe the last couple but i'm gonna go on a limb and say and do they have a john cena now they do and if john cena and the rock don't fight for a heavyweight title, well, John's not even watching it. it it's the, the John, they put, they got John in there because The Rock was out. Oh, he's not in the. So in they're the not most together. Reason. No, uh, they probably yeah, they probably hate each other. They they they're going through some things apparently, and, and it was so stupid because now The Rock has his spinoff with Jason Statham, right? Do they? Uh, oh, was something Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, have you seen that? Ridiculous. I've never seen. What the was new the one? last Fast and Furious you watched? Oh man, Fast, Fast Five. I think was the last yeah. one. Fast Five is the best one. The one out of all I, of them. The one that Fast we visit and, though Fast is space. Tokyo Drift. I've seen more than any of the oh. others. Yeah, it's funny it because Tokyo Drift is the only movie out of all of those movies that's actually a racing movie. None of them are racing movies. Like like Fast Five is is a heist film. Yeah. The first two Fast and Furious films were, were cop dramas. Yeah. With the backdrop right. of the racing world. But this movie's actually like high stakes racing, bro. Blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So and and because Fast Four, Fast Five, and Fast Six are prequels to Tokyo Drift, it all leads up to the events of Tokyo Drift, and it makes the events of Tokyo Drift like ten times more significant. So I actually enjoy it now because I understand a lot of what I didn't even know any of that. Yeah, that see, it's, it's, I just hated it's, Tokyo Drift because little Bow Wow's in it. Oh, he was terrible and in it too. And he drove like a Scion. Or he didn't a, drive at all. Oh, yeah, but he had this, the Hulk <laughs> Scion, right? Yeah, he did. You should Which talk was, about that on the Super Tangent. I will podcast. never. I will I never. Know. No, yeah. never. But these are the sort of things I like to talk about. Super Tangent, and yeah, it's they're super fun, and they lead to great tangents. Like exactly, we just got on from comic books to the Fast and the Furious. Exactly, and it's all one big nerdy sphere of doom. Yeah, you know, and that's um. You know what another great uh, heist movie was? Mm -hmm. And The Italian Job. The Italian Job. I like it. Yeah, that I was like a really that. good one. Yeah, had a Jason great platonic Statham thing going here, Tyrese. Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Walker, Back from the Dead. Thanks. Hey. We'll find you a cool character too, Drew. <laughs> it's gonna not be... going to be Vin Diesel. You're going to be Sookie. You're going to be Sookie. I get the ankle monitor. No one gets the ankle monitor. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to walk around and say, I don't want to talk about it, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> pockets yeah. ain't empty, cuz. Yeah, pockets ain't empty no more, cuz. Yeah, <laughs> that was that's what made that one like, ooh, this is hard to watch. Why would why'd Paul Walker say that? <laughs> Nobody says cuz. It's funny because I walk around jokingly <laughs> saying cuz all the time, like to my wife or my kids. It's the funnest thing. 
He was dead serious too. He was, and that's what made it rough. Like, oh boy, we'll talk about a cut. You know? Yeah. Oh man, those are by far some of the best movies. I was like, okay, Paul, you got a hood pass today. Yeah, you're, just only today. You're done. Funny if Tyrese whooped his ass right there. <laughs> Shut up. You ain't down, blood. Yeah. Oh, oh man. God. Yeah, those movies are great. Yeah, it's fun talking about that stuff. You just feel lighter. Like I feel better already, you know. And yeah. So it's like that's what that's what I want to do with Super Tangent. Do you ever have people on, it or it's just you kind of talking to them, like reviewing something that you want to review that day? Every few episodes, I have someone on. Yeah. Because like I love Star Wars, right? Do you? But I, I absolutely I do. I actually do but, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I know at least three people that know Star Wars, like literally everything about Star Wars, yeah. to the point where it exhausts me when they talk about it. Yeah. So I, when I want to talk about something, I'm like. I like this thing, but I want to get someone that I know knows everything about it. Yeah. Right? Um, and that I can still kind of keep up with. Yeah. So, like, my boy Tony, he lives in Arizona now, but um, the first Star Wars episode that I did, I was like, I got to get you on because you know more than I do. So we can discuss how how we feel from a, um, you know, kind of subjective point of view. Let's talk about the prequels. Let's talk yeah. about the sequels, right? Yeah. Uh, let's talk about how terrible number nine was. Uh, let's, Which one was number nine? So I, I, uh, I say I love them. As in, like, I watched all of them growing up. Right. And then, you know, even to, like, the whatever one had that horrible computerized uh, Jar Jar Binks um, and no, that was Attack the first. of the Clones, maybe? That was, no, that was uh, 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 The Phantom Menace. Was it that one? Um, and so, yes, that one. And, you know, I actually do enjoy, so I assume number nine is, like, one of the newer ones that came out. Yeah. It's, um, which it's... I do enjoy those ones. Um, I maybe haven't watched all of them. Yeah. But uh, I do like like the animation uh, oh, and the, the special visually. effects, I guess, and Beautiful. it's just visually really good. So Beautiful. I might have looked past the storyline mm -hmm. to watch, and I've only seen it once, and I think I'm actually missing a couple just because mm -hmm. you know they're kind of hard to get now. Like everything's right, like right, locked right, into right, one right, streaming right. platform, or they're something all on like Disney that. Plus, yeah. and yeah, um, I actually just got Disney Plus again. Um, okay. Just because it's such a good deal with if you get the bundle. Yeah, with ESPN and, and yep. Hulu, yeah. And uh, so I need to get back on and like and watch uh, all the TV shows they have now. Tons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and just fill up something I can just aimlessly watch. And yeah. And I, and, and I will say this. I don't know if you've watched Star Wars Rogue One. I think I have seen that one. Okay. So Star Wars Andor is on. Um, and that's the TV show, right? That's TV show. Yeah. Because yeah. the character casting Andor is like the deuteragonist of, of the stupid Rogue One movie. I'm sorry, I say stupid, but I, I did like it. But yeah. You know, Cassian Andor's his character that was just kind of thrown in the movie. Everyone's a new character, right? We don't we don't have any emotional attachment to these characters. Yeah. And they all die at the end anyway. Oh, so, nice. you know, Cassian and Andor. <laughs> Save you guys yourself some time and don't watch those. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yeah. And so they, they released this Andor movie that or TV show that no one asked for. Yeah. No one cares about Andor enough for him to get his own TV show. Yeah. But dude, I swear, this is the best TV show of 2002. I nice. swear to God. Did it is they, uh, so good. Did they make another season? Uh, what was the other... Uh... The Baby Yoda show. Oh, Mandalorian. Did they make another season of that? There's two seasons of that. Okay. Three's coming out next year. Um, and then they did the Boba Fett series. So I think I'm thinking of Boba Fett then. Um, okay. And not Andor. But someone, and I think it was uh, the UFC uh, the UFC podcast. is like Jim Norton and Matt Sarah, if you ever check mm -hmm. it out. Um, but they're just talking about UFC events coming up. Yeah. But Matt Sarah is really big into Star Wars. And he was like, man, this Boba Fett show is the best. Mm. Like, it's like immediately. It's, good. it's like right out of the gate. Like it's just heavy out of the gate. It is. And so I think that's why. I, so I don't think I've actually heard of the Andor one. But like I so said, I got this so I could like get back up and watch it. I originally mm. actually got Disney Plus back. One, because, you know, the kids love Disney and some stuff that comes out on that. Absolutely. And for an extra two bucks a month, if you pay for ESPN Plus, mm. for two more bucks a month, you can have Hulu and Disney. So why wouldn't you? Right. That's and a crazy I good deal. And I still haven't seen Eternals. And, okay. And I, I was like, I'm missing that. And I decided, I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. So I watched that. And, mm. and What would you think? It was all right. It was okay. I'm sure there's like a, there's got to be... Man, there there had to have been something in there that they needed mm -hmm. to bring off into the storyline, right? To keep going, right? Because now, like the phase one and two storyline, it's all over, right? Like they're pretty done. much, they're done. Um, yeah. Like you still get Thor and and like you know and whatnot. That's gonna keep going, but like that main story is mm -hmm. over, which I'm I'm gonna say without a doubt is the best story ever told mm. from <laughs> from. I guess it would actually be the Hulk, yeah. But from the Hulk 
all the way to Endgame. Yes. If you watch all those and like, and it, this is like, this is what a fifteen year journey that we're on. Like ten, if you, fifteen. If you watched it from the beginning, like when we were probably at the end oh of high gosh. school, maybe yeah. right yeah, out of high school. Yeah, two thousand eight, because we graduated what oh seven. Oh seven. Yeah. And Iron Man came out in oh eight. Yeah. So, so you're talking about you know fifteen years, fourteen years, and I guess when the Titanic came out, it might have been only thirteen, but yeah. Um, like. Man, like yeah. I still watch it today, yeah. and like I maybe I'll watch you know Infinity Wars or I'll watch Endgame. I still get chills today. Like same anytime same. in Infinity Wars when Thor enters Wakanda. Oh my gosh, boy! Like yeah, dude. I could just cry right now. It, it was so good. It's it's amazing. Oh, those vibes and the fact that they they still hold up today. Oh, you know what I mean. Today. I could and everyone not everyone twice. I've probably done it twice. Like and throughout you know a long period of time. Like all right, tonight I'm gonna watch Hulk. Yeah, and I'm just gonna go in order and watch them all, and it takes you a, it takes you a bit to do it, but and then I'll get you know to Endgame and same thing. Endgame yeah. when uh, is like you know on your six or whatever, and then all the portals open Dude, and it yeah. comes through and everyone's out. Like I get chills mm. right now talking about. It. I had to wear a hoodie because I knew this was gonna yeah, be a tear yeah. right, absolutely. right here. Absolutely, but like I said, I love those movies. Like by far the favorite movies ever, mm -hmm. and that whole thing. Like I like the comic books, you know. Uh, right. But I just didn't get into them uh, ever since, you know, I've, I've been a child. Right. So, right, like, right. being a near adult, being out of high school, and to have those that come back to is super fun. Like, you're at the yeah. perfect age. You're, yeah. like, you're you're still a kid. You're kind of an adult. And, like, you can still get attached to these. So, to, like, be, you know, 33 years old and still have these things. Right. So, so to get back to the Eternals, though, um, yeah. I'm sure they had something. Because, like, they, they have to build a whole new timeline now. They yeah. have to build, you know, they got to start from scratch. Like, mm. they don't have Iron Man anymore. Uh, I'd, I think the Hulk was even up in the air at some point for Mark Ruffalo, um, but yeah. as we know, they could just recast and yeah. and go on about it. I think he's going to stick it out for a while. I think so but... too. Like he's not like that deep into it. You're, you you weren't there from the beginning, like Robert Downey Jr. Mm. And also Robert Downey Jr. is like old now so like, yeah, how often are yeah. you going to buy him being a superhero just right. by the look of him? Like uh, like uh, Logan. Yeah, you know, uh, he had he basically, you know, and and these guys are only known for that. I'm sure that's part of it too. Like, right, you want to be known for other things and mm -hmm. all that, but yeah, also like out. you're just not physically the appearance we need of anymore. Of course not. He was he was Hugh Jackman was Wolverine for 20 years. Yeah, X Men came out in 2000, oh, dude. Yeah. yeah, 20 years plus. Yeah, so it's like dude, we gotta move on. And those and X Men, I feel like there's some good X Men. Yeah, I there's some bad ones too. Like when they yeah. switch to the kids. And like, I just wasn't. That big, was an interesting choice. Was a, I wasn't a big fan of it. There's there was some good stuff in it here and there. Yeah. But man, when they brought Logan back to uh, to come in, oh, his final movie, oh, love it. That yeah. was crazy. And that's what they need more of, personally. Yeah. And I think they got into it a little bit with Scarlet Witch, um, in the multiverse. Oh, of they got pretty gritty, dude. They got pretty dark, and, and I like that. Fun. I yep. like that. It was fun. I went, uh, me and Bill went and watched it. And yeah. uh, like I said, yeah, that was a good one. I think they did that one justice, but they need more like that. Like, mm -hmm. we're, you're getting into it now to where, like, you have an adult audience too. Obviously, exactly. you have the kid stuff, and, and you can keep the kid stuff, and you should. And, mm -hmm. and Miss Shazam or Miss Marvel yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And She Hulk. Like, I mean, that's not going to keep my attention as an adult. Right. Um, but, like, Scarlet Witch being dark. Mm -hmm. And her taking over a town. Yeah, um, those are fun. Like WandaVision what I was watch. great. I think out of all the the Marvel the MCU TV shows, WandaVision yeah. is still my favorite. It one. was a great one, and it, it started off marvelous. really slow. Mm -hmm. The first two episodes, you got to really bear through, right? Because they didn't tell you what the heck was going on at no. all, and, the, and you don't really find out what was going on until really deep into it. Yeah, they just throw you enough. Like, who's that guy who came out of the sewer? Right. This is gonna be good. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait for two more episodes when they get into this. <laughs> then they started adding color here and there yeah but the best thing and like i'm glad i suffered through the beginning of it because mm -hmm. when quicksilver came at the end oh my god i literally I was, sat I up and like, i threw my chair across my like, living room that's the other quicksilver. i was like and then we're like Dude, oh we're in the multiverse now this is it the x-men uh, are here baby i was so pumped on that they they made me so mad yeah but With like that. but stuff like the wanda uh and stuff like 
Hugh Jackman being in Logan and being more dark and yeah. a lot more just kind of murderous and Deadpool stuff like that. Yeah, like, start making more. Of we those. need more of that. Yeah, like we Doctor really Strange do. could get dark too. Like, yeah. I mean, he has a dark storyline. I'm pretty sure. Like, mm-hmm. get into that. He's been to some dark places and fought some dark people. And right. so, Multiverse of Madness. I love that it was directed by Sam Raimi, who is a mastermind in the horror cinema world. He yeah, directed that the, makes sense. The Evil Dead trilogy, uh, Drag Me to Hell with Justin Long. I think that came out in 07. He yeah. he knows horror, right? Yeah. Like, that's his thing. He also directed uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. So he okay. knows superhero and horror. So yeah. it was amazing that he, of all people, was, was uh, you know, uh, uh, hired yeah. to direct, you know, Doctor Strange 2. Because it, it got to some horror places, um, but it could get darker, a lot darker. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You and, know? It, and it should. It can, and even if it just plateaued at that, but they just brought more of it in, yeah. I'm super happy with. Yeah. But, change it up a little like you're going really soft on on and getting like political in some movies like mm-hmm. uh and we don't have to get into it but they're like throwing things into movies kind of for no reason when it doesn't need to be and they're hinting right. at more political issues and kind of hot topics at the moment right like hinting at a, a shitty president oh mm-hmm. good one every show does that do you right. really need to do that like right. can we can we not make this about like something trending in the in the media right now right uh, a lot of us watch these movies and stuff to escape we're that. trying to get out of that yeah. yeah um but so man like yeah i just you know i love those movies yeah let's get into the design thing, the yeah. JW design. I'm sure we'll we'll get back on a nice tangent about that because we could talk for hours about that. Absolutely. <laughs> How did you get into the graphic design, making logos for people? Because you have quite a few out there. I saw you put out the one, um, the incarcerated thing. And yeah. I, I think around that same time you did some other stuff, put, kind of put out like a collage of people like you've worked with and done designs for. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's obviously like taken off enough that you're getting out there and getting some big things. So yeah. how'd you get started in that? So I started uh, doing graphic design and digital design uh, when I was in high school at Bartlett, uh, 2000, I want to say five. My was there dad, a class for that? There wasn't a class for that, but I, but my dad, uh, and he's a professional painter, he bought me Adobe uh, Photoshop at yeah. the time. And I had no idea what this was. I didn't ask for it. I didn't know yeah. what you do with it. So over time, I got a, a little um, Wacom tablet, uh, you know, with the pen and the digital pad. Yeah. And so you draw on the pad and it shows up on the sc- on the screen. I was like, oh, that's rad. You know, this um, was in high school? This was in high school. I didn't really have stuff like that in high school. Yeah, no. I figured uh, that's like a new thing. Adobe, no. Adobe has yeah. been on, on their game for a very, very, very long time. And uh, which is why they're they're like the graphic design you know yeah. um, application developers today that you kind of go to they're the, they're like the Apple of mm-hmm. you know the graphic design digital art and um, so you know I I didn't know really what I was dealing with but I it was like a lot of fun so I just kind of kept dabbling in it and then in college um, I took a graphic design course because I was an art major at the time. I graduated as a sociology major, but when I was still an art major, I was like, let me just get all these art things out of the way. Let me yeah. draw and paint and, and you know live my passions out this way. Um, and so I was really excited to take a graphic design course. It was a beginner's course. And I was uh, flabbergasted when the teacher said the first day, the number one rule in this class is you will not use Photoshop no. at all. We're not here about. I was like, why? What the heck? That, that, that's what I know. Like, I feel like I, that's what like anyone in that industry is using, though. You like, would think. Yeah. But then he explained to me something. He said the mathematics of Photoshop are different than Adobe Illustrator, which is what we primarily use, mm-hmm. and that has to do with the fact that Adobe Photoshop is about raster images, I- images, imagery. So if something is raster or rasterized, what it means is that, for example, this. For example, if this was like a digital logo mm-hmm. on Photoshop and maybe like something like Canva, this would really just be composed of a bunch of tiny microscopic little squares, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you blow it up, you just see a bunch of big squares. It looks like an 8-bit video game like Super Mario or something like that. Yeah. With vectorized imagery, vector design, which is what Adobe Illustrator and InDesign uses, um, you can blow this up as big as you want, and the integrity of the image isn't tarnished whatsoever. Wow. So I learned then and there that actually big companies, um, local companies, but also really, really big companies, when you study um, you know, kind of like the history of like logo design and stuff like that, they're using 
vector image applications like mm -hmm. Adobe Illustrator. Yeah. You know? Is that, is that the big difference between Photoshop and Adobe? Then? That's the primary thing, okay. yeah. I'm sure there's tons of differences, yeah. but like that's the big one. That's that's the major big one for creating wow. art from scratch. And of course, Adobe Illustrator is excellent for, you know, like photography as well yeah. and other things like that. I'm not into photography personally. I just want to make really fun art from scratch. Yeah. And Adobe Illustrator is kind of like that thing and then I took advanced uh, graphic design where we just kind of took what we learned in beginners and, and applied it a little bit more, but also learned about the industry. Yeah. Uh, you know, how do people get into this? How do people make money off of designing uh, websites and designing logos and designing like workbooks for companies and stuff like that? Because uh, letterheads, you know, you yeah. see graphic design literally everywhere. It, yeah. It's, it's unavoidable. Um so get into the industry. How do you learn about it? So I always just like played around with it. And like the biggest foray for me doing graphic design after college was making designs for all of the stuff that I wanted to do. So yeah. like Super Tangent Podcast, yeah. which I started in 2017, did the logo for that. Um, my wife at the time, uh, you know, she I taught her how to do Illustrator. Yeah. And she taught me how to build businesses and stuff like that like online so we learned a lot from one another and so yeah. being able to put those two things together was really a cinch um but over time it was really just kind of like a word of mouth kind of thing i mean people know me around town it's like oh yeah you draw you're the kid who used to draw in high school all yeah the time. so it's like people know i'm into art but then i put my stuff out there put my stuff on, so on social media i build a website and just let people know hey if you need something, let me know because I could probably hook you up, right? Yeah. I could probably do this for you. And now it's kind of gotten to a point where I don't have to go fishing for clients. Clients hear my name, yeah. check my stuff out, and then give yeah. me a call. And like, which, is, oh. which is the goal, Which right? is the goal. That's the goal for That's like goal. all the things you're doing. It's the goal for you know a home inspector, a real estate agent. That's like it. We want people to come to us. Yeah. And eventually, obviously, like doing uh, since 2017 for the podcast and... Yeah. And being kind of known before, like you, you're obviously well into it now. Yeah. So like that's you know like this is what you know you've reached yeah. the goal and like the milestone yeah. of like getting people to come to you and just the word of mouth aspect. That's great. Thank you, man. It is a, it is definitely a, a milestone, and I think now the goal is to just have an influx of like consistent clientele. Yeah. Um, I did uh, the the decarcerated event for uh, ACLU. American Civil Liberties Union. They have a chapter, I think, in every state in America. Yeah. And there's one here. Um, and so they 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 talked to me about, you know, this campaign. We need someone to design these digital logos uh, for this event, this, this art gallery um, event that we're having um, that features art um, from incarcerated Alaskans. Yeah. Um, we have a really big... Um, incarceration issue yeah and uh the aclu does a phenomenal job at um taking a look at this issue and finding ways to mitigate a lot of the the pains and the wounds that a lot of the families outside of jail are having for having loved ones inside of it yeah and our our prison is our prison system healthy is it safe yeah you know um and um, is it actually providing justice, right? That's a really big it, thing. Is anywhere's prison system or jail system doing that? As far as I'm probably concerned, absolutely not. not. I watched some crazy, um, and it's probably going to go off on a crazy tangent, which, <laughs> which would be fun. Yeah. Um, I watch, and this could be well-known things, but like just going on these YouTube binges yeah. or you know, just maybe a Netflix binge or something like that, you get yeah. into... Obviously, uh, so I was on a Civil War kick, okay. um, and that's what started this one off. Yeah. And obviously, everyone knows the Civil War, mm -hmm. and you know, there's you know reasons people think it started, reasons why other people think it started, and the truth could lay somewhere in the middle, but probably a lot closer to the one side. People mm. wanted slaves, and other people didn't want that to be a thing. Right. So they made the jail system as like the workaround for that. Yeah. To where like the in the Constitution or or whatnot, mm -hmm. it was yeah no one can legally own someone mm -hmm. unless they committed a crime. Right. And now everybody's committing crimes. <laughs> Come, like so and the then, convenience. It, yeah, yeah, the convenience. The same people. You mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, obviously we're not to get on the, into that, but right, like it just that's what the kind of the prison system is now, and and it's whether it's, terrible, it's, yeah. it, it's all one demographic or it's multiple demographics, mm -hmm. um, and what it is, 
And like I said, it's not just obviously not just one skin color in there. It's everybody in there, and right. there's tons of people who deserve to be in there, mm. regardless of you know their skin color that they are. Right. But yeah, like you're just keeping legal slaves because you found yeah. a way around that. And no. it's like the people who are in there for like a, a petty drug crime, or right. you know, or something like that. Uh, to compare to, you know, and being treated like, like California has the three strikes rule, right? Right. Like you could get in, you know, a, a very minor crime and I'm not, I think they have to be felonies. Mm-hmm. I don't actually know that. So, but you can do three minor things. You could do three minor felonies, you know, right. obviously that right. aren't, uh, right. that aren't, you know, murder. And you could do it three times, like a DUI. You could get a DUI three times and go to prison forever. Right. Oh, come on. That's insane. That's so crazy. So like whatever it might be, like you're obviously... Your goal is not to rehabilitate. Your goal is not to like you know do the do your crime, do the time, and get mm-hmm. out and be a better functioning member. Right. Like at some at some point, you're you're just there to get in. And yeah. To stay in and, and to and stay they're there to keep you in and, the, and for them to keep you in there. It's it's the equivalent of you know going you know telling a child clean your room. Yeah. And with all this dust and all these clothes and all these dirty things on the floor, and they're just sweeping it under the bed. Yeah. Right. They're like, yeah. oh, we did our job, and now we get to go home. Yep. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 no. We actually need to talk about this because this is a really big problem. I am going to tell my kids that, though. If you do that three times, you're grounded for life. Oh, my God. That's going to work. Yeah. That's going to work. I'm going to tell my oldest, <laughs> oldest ones that first. There you go. Um, so, yeah, the ACLU, uh, they hit me up. Uh, and, and that, so that, did that you, was – So did you know somebody involved in it? I did or, did, it no. or is this the word of mouth thing? It just, just got around that they heard about you, and they wanted – and they reached out to you. Yeah, they reached That's out awesome. to me, which is cool, which, which really – you know, networking pays off oh for sure getting to know people and knowing people man it, it really pays off and to have genuine connections with these people really does pay off i have no idea who the aclu really was before they called me yeah um uh megan edge uh gave me a call and she works with aclu i know that and name uh i you probably know think her she know trains her. at legacy or did um I think I've seen her name like tagged in like legacy jujitsu posts. So mm-hmm. hey, if you do train at legacy, shout out to you, Megan Edge. Yes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, she's yeah. great. Yeah. And she called me and, and when we had this discussion about what decarcerated was going to be, um, and it was originally named something else, something like really, really long. And she was like, if you have any ideas about yeah. the name, you can, the, you know, it, you can change it. The name matters. And so, yeah, I, I, I named it decarcerated and she's like the perfect, let's, let's run with that. And so she was just like, can you make these, these different flyers? Um, for this event, and I, then you know, during our consultation, I really got into <laughs> all of these things that I learned from you know my ex-wife, that I learned from um, you know trial and error yeah. about how social media works and how digital art and graphic design works on social media. So we have to talk about all of these different things, and I think like. I, it was like an out of body experience. I felt like a like a robot talking yeah. uh, about. Um, you know, the differences between um, marketing for an event on Facebook as opposed to Twitter, as opposed to yeah. uh, <laughs> Instagram, you know, um, and, and all of this stuff. I just really got into it. And um, she was like, OK, so we, we're going to do all this stuff. Um, What do I owe you? Yeah. And that was the scary part because yeah. this is the part where people want to run away when yeah. they when they hear your fees, right? Um, you can be the best person in the whole world, and your fees can be completely justified up the wazoo. Yeah. But if they don't have the budget for it, they're gonna be like, eh, no, I'm sorry, man, I got rent to pay this week or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so I was scared because I had no idea what to say. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Because on my website, um, I have you know the list. I call it my menu. I have my websites. I have uh, you know infographics. I have logos. You know, four hundred dollars, thousand dollars, fifteen thousand for you know a rush job, whatever, right? <laughs> it's well worth it. It's worth it because I know yeah. what I'm worth and I know how and, much and I you, pay and for you these have programs. To, yeah, you have to know like what what your bill is. Like you have to know you what you're worth. You have to know like, that. Yes. You ha- otherwise you're gonna you're gonna end up trying. You know, eighty percent off if you you get and you're not making anything. You're not even yeah. making meat men's ends meet because. The, the programs that you're buying cost 100 150 a month. Yeah, I heard you, know you guys talking about, like, the programs, um, and I don't remember what the names were now, but, like, the price for it to, like, do, like, the editing and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'd imagine those come with updates and all this, or yeah. maybe you have to buy a new one that doesn't cover that. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you're, you're totally right. Like, everything you do comes with a fee. And it's just like a, a business, you know? Like, right. 
say um, I, you know, I came from a construction background. So to, you know, go pave your parking lot, like that takes equipment. Like, right. And like they have to buy a paver. They have to buy dump trucks. They right. have to buy the material to do it. Exactly. And so like you're not just getting charged for the time. You're right. getting charged for like everything, everything that like it gets put into it. Yeah. Because it's not just that you have this stuff already mm. and one person pays for it one time and then no one no. else pays for it again. Like, no. no, like all these things cost money to even the, the upkeep to them. Exactly. To make them better. Something better always comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So and then what happens when my computer crashes? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Little and things like that. And just like the business, like you're putting like maintenance money into it also exactly. because like you have to pay to maintain it or you have to pay to replace it. Exactly. Exa yeah. No, so when totally they pay true. me four hundred dollars for a logo, that's not going in my pocket, right? That's not. No. You know that yeah. goes back into the business. Yeah. That goes into savings so that if something goes wrong, yeah. there's the money to cover and it. And honestly, out of that four hundred dollars that like the logo costs or or any of the other things you do, like four hundred dollars isn't that much. It's really not. And like a majority of that, yeah goes back in the business and such a small amount of four hundred dollars is actually gonna go into your pocket. Yes. Like what are you gonna you're gonna go yeah. you're not gonna you're not even gonna go grocery shopping right, right, with what right, goes into right. your pocket. It's gonna take tons of logos to make like a full week's grocery absolutely. shopping trip. Absolutely. So man, yeah. That's it, you know. Uh, now real quick, you've said fifteen thousand. Yeah. What like I, and you and you I do know you made the point to say rush on that. Yeah. But is that on your website, like on that menu of prices? It what is. is so? What does fifteen thousand dollars get so me? So th this is a very specific thing, though. Okay. Um, and I think the only thing that's fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, is on it fifteen hundred? Fifteen hundred. Yeah, one thousand five hundred. Oh, all right. So I'm gonna go from this to I'm gonna keep going like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you said, uh, and and there was a slight. Did I say fifteen thousand? You said thousand, yeah. And there was a slight stumble on the word, so I was just like, wait, yeah, no, 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 fifteen hundred. No, no way. I will get to that point okay, at, no. w one day. Okay, but no, fifteen hundred. Yeah, since, since we're on it, though, what is the fifteen hundred? So fifteen hundred. Uh, I, I have what's called a website in a week. Oh, right. Okay. G we have a consultation. You, you you give me everything that I need in seven days. I'll go to Squarespace and I will give you a up and running website. Yeah. Seven How days. many times do they bring you like this is what I have? It's just not near enough to make like a website. About or, half the time. Yeah. I, you I know, imagine it's often. It, yeah. And, you know, with me, it's kind of like I, I always ask during our consultation, like, do you have everything that I need, yeah. right? Do you have the copy? Do you have the photography? Do you have the images? Do you have the PNGs? Do you have everything that I need to build this thing? Or yeah. do you need me to create it for you? Yeah. Because I love doing it. I have no problem doing yeah. it. There's no extra fees if I have to do the extra work. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? Take note to that, people. There you go. So, I mean, it's great if, if you'll do it all for them. But... Like the goal should be for them. Like if they're doing something for themselves, like making a website or doing this, like it's it should be personal. Yeah. Um. So again, it's great if you'll do it for them, especially like there's no extra charge for it. But they're gonna get, you know, they're gonna get your ideas, and it's gonna be like more personal to you. Right. I'm sure it'll be kind to try to gear towards them, but you know, mm. you can't make it personal for them. Right? Exactly. Like we you need like I need my ideas. I right. need their ideas, their voice, and, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. They don't want something like you shouldn't want something generic. You shouldn't want something that's kind of maybe an idea you had for somebody else or or whatnot or you know because you know who knows what their idea might be. But you're gonna you might have a different outlook on that. Right. So like I said yeah. If if you'll do it, that's great. But you know, please people take take the time, make mm -hmm. it personal to you, and you just you're just gonna have a better product. That's that's exactly right. Like getting your voice out there is one of the primary things that I've learned kind of on this entrepreneurial journey is not sounding like the people who've already made it. Yeah. Is trying to sound like me. It's my voice is very unique. It's very specific. Um, you, you know, both in, you know, when you're reading it, I want people to read what I have to say and be like, oh, that doesn't sound like anything I've ever read before. Yeah. But then when also people are listening to my voice on Justin's, uh, you know, Alaska Eats or, uh, you know, my podcast, people are like, oh, yeah, people, that's one thing that people always say is, Justin, you have a nice voice. I like your nice. voice. Which I think is weird. Nice. You, I should, you should narrate things. I guess, I, maybe I should. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you have a good voice for radio. I am on the which radio. Which you also do that. Let's touch on that real quick. Yeah. But then... Before we leave, we have to talk about the vlog, the food Absolutely. vlog. Absolutely. So the morning radio, like every weekend, every Saturday or Sunday. It's kind of inconsistent now because because I, I work full time at the Alaska Native Justice Center. I can't go in like every two weeks or three weeks and do the live show Monday mornings. It's yeah. uh, through Alaska Public Media. Uh, it's um, 
the show is called Hometown Alaska. And so we, because I have the full-time job, uh, and I basically, basically beg them to take me back because I had to quit to yeah. do the full-time job. Oh, yeah. But I was like, dude, I love radio so much. I got to get back on there. So I, I took, uh, I, I went out with the COO. Um, we had dinner at Tequila 61 downtown. Place is amazing. Shout outs to them. And I was like, man, what can I do to get back on the radio? Yeah. And so now we kind of like, me and uh, Ammon Swenson is one of the greatest producers I've ever met. Um, he he and I we collaborate. We kind of co-produce projects, topics, things like that. Yeah. Then jump in the studio on an off day, on a weekday evening, or like a, a weekend morning. You know, yeah. a Saturday or whatever. Uh, like a, a week and a half before the sh- the show actually okay. gets put on the radio instead yeah. of it being live because that's all we that's all we can do. But you know, we talk about different things that are going on in the city. We try not to get like too serious. Or too goofy, you know, like some yeah. days we'll just like have a chill topic, we'll talk about food, we'll talk about other people that are doing amazing things. Uh, one of my favorite episodes I did with a, a guy named Sourdough Dan, oh. who actually runs uh, Alaska Footprints, um, which is a food tour in the city, right? Yeah, I think, um, and you did like a little collaboration on the Alaska Eats thing, right? I did, yeah. And you went along video. on his tour, right? Yeah. I saw that one. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely amazing. So I got him in here, and I was like, man, let's just talk about the city for a minute. You know, let's yeah. talk about the history of Anchorage, let's talk about food and how the two things correlate. And then I had a couple of people on, like, oh, okay, like today is like National uh, Sobriety Month. Let's let's talk about sobriety. Let's yeah. talk about recovery. You know, let's get someone from Recover Alaska. Let's get a psychologist in here and let's just kind of discuss because it's a really big thing here in Anchorage. You know, the the misuse and abuse of you know of substances of alcohol. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about sobriety and addiction in positive ways instead of condemning either side. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because people need to hear this. People need to wake up in the morning, turn on the radio, and listen to something that they uh, can relate to yeah. or learn something about, right? My yeah, definition of an expert is not someone who knows a lot. It's someone who is always willing to learn more. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a good outlook. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be an expert in, in, in these sorts of things. Coming into something with an a massive amount of knowledge is always very helpful yeah. too. But you become not only no longer an asset, but an asshole when you stop being teachable. Yeah. Right. So, you know, being an expert is you're not an expert if you're not willing to learn. Yeah. You know, and, and so you can't, you can't be, right? You can't be. Yeah. yeah. And so being on the radio, I'm learning a lot of things all the time. Uh, both behind the board and just with topical stuff. So, yeah. like, being on the radio is awesome, man. So, on on the radio, you mentioned the one guy and Sandy's a producer, but is it just you on air yes. or is it both you guys? So, it's just me. Okay. Um, and then and once in a while with the guest or always with the guest? Always with a guest. Okay. Usually two guests, preferably three, but oh, COVID really? kind of mess things up, right? Yeah. And all um, different, like, different people doing different things or all kind of related guests? Oh, related guests of, okay. of, of one topic, right? So if I get a topic on there, I want to talk about politics and I'll get, you know, two people who are in the political world to come and talk to, about that with me. Um, I'm not the only host. There are, like, every week there's a different host, right? There's uh, only, like, two or three of us yeah. now. Um, so if you, like, go to the catalog at Alaska Public Media, like, .org or whatever, I don't know. But if you go online and you find us and you find all the archives or Hometown Alaska to listen – um, to the radio show, yeah, you know, you'll get a different host every, yeah. you know, every couple of weeks or whatever. Yeah. So, and what uh, what station is it on? Um, Alaska Public Media, ninety one point one FM, ninety one point one FM. Yep, everything's FM, isn't it? Isn't AM like talk shows, or is AM the music and? I don't know. What I don't know things. I don't know. <laughs> FM Un- is primarily music. Unimportant people. You get a lot of talk shows on AM. Yeah. Is that what it's? Yeah. Yeah. And so you're on FM, though, right? FM. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. You made it, <laughs> made it, baby. Yeah that's, yeah, that's where that's the end goal. Yeah. All right. So, Justin's Alaska Eats. Yeah. Um. You know, obviously, you're doing tons of good things, but mm-hmm. I think this one's probably the biggest uh thing you're doing as far as like, yeah. especially like followers and just most well known thing. Yeah. And it's it's great. They're they're short videos and pretty much always, you know, local spots. Right. Sometimes hidden gems. Sometimes mm-hmm. maybe popular spots that people know about. Um, and the videos are fun to watch. They're put mm-hmm. together well. Uh, I, they're narrated, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, some of them are narrated. Yep. So, and and some of them are like as like basic as just kind of being in your car driving yeah. or in the parking lot. Uh, some of them are like kind of clips of you, everything from going into the restaurant, eating, taking out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like all the videos are a little bit different, um, but all great. So Thank let's you. get into 
how do, how how do you get into doing that? Like, what was like the first video you did, and what was the reasoning behind? Like, I want to not say critique these people's food, right? But I want to just kind of make a video about this and and put it out there. I think the first thing, um, again, this is my ex wife's idea. She's brilliant. Yeah. Um, she was like, "We, you need to get on TikTok." At the, at the time, I was like, "You need." She she was like, "You need to get on TikTok, dude." I'm yeah. like, "Why?" I don't like TikTok. All them like, dance moves, bro. No way. Like, what the hell? And she was like, no, because, like, you have personality, you have charm, and you're very enthusiastic about the things that you love. Look at your voice for Super Tangent. Imagine if people saw you when they when when you were talking about those things. Um, but you're passionate about food. You care about it. Um, you like making it. I'm not a baker or chef by any means, but I enjoy food that much. It's basically become a love language, sharing it with people. Yeah. Right. And I was like, eh, whatever. So for like months, I just like, you know, brushed her off and ignored her about that. But then uh, the Popeye's chicken craze happened. Right. It, 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 there was a it, thing about it. It was Popeyes, a craze. Yeah. It was a craze. I was like, what is going on? And so I didn't do an actual review, but when I went to go eat it, uh me and her she recorded me do it yeah and it didn't like blow up or anything yeah. right it was just for fun it was a fun little did you experiment. uh did you put it on your only fans mm, i well i haven't made my only fans yet yeah feet only nice um that's happening but uh it was like it was kind of like my first foray into doing anything remotely like that and actually talking about what i enjoyed about it yeah it had really nothing to do with the actual brand that was just kind of like my first foray into that yeah but then um covid did happen 2020 yeah Crazy year, restaurants were closing. We were shut in. Um, I, I I lost my full time job at the time. I was in an ophthalmology clinic, and um, you know, full time, and they had to close down, man, because the the pandemic was just too yeah. bad, you know. And I was like, we were door dashing fast food every day, bro, yeah. and I got sick of it. I was like, this is disgusting. What I eat, my daughter eats, you know, yeah. and we're not, we're not. We're not doing so hot right now. We know one is. It's a rough time for everyone. It's a rough time for our restaurants. And so, you know, it, it was a mixture of wanting to do better for myself, my daughter, um, but also wanting to help the people of Anchorage in some way because everyone was struggling. And I hated um, being in the middle of this pandemic, feeling like I couldn't do anything for the people that I care about. Yeah. I saw restaurants closed down that I've been going to my entire life. And yeah. I was like, what can I do to help these people and and bring some light you know, and so I just went down to Arctic Roadrunner on a whim because they have my favorite burger in yeah. the state, uh, the Kenai Burger. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I went back in my car because I don't want to record myself like in front, you know, where there's noise in front of people, you know, like, and, yeah, it, you know, so yeah. I just went in the privacy of my car and I was like, this is the best burger in Alaska. I'm going to show you guys. And uh, in I'm, hindsight, real quick. Yeah. Do you think everyone inside was like, why is this guy with this camera in his car? <laughs> Probably, right? Because <laughs> I mean, let's let's be real about the demographic of people who go there is a bunch of old white people. Yeah, you know, and so of course they were probably either really too interested <laughs> or completely of, unbothered. Bunch of Civil War supporters, <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of coppers. Justin's words, uh, not mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they they probably were. But you know what? I it takes a lot for me to be embarrassed, and I, I you really have to put yourself out there and be yeah. willing to at least be embarrassed a little bit. Um, to, to put yourself out there, you know, yeah. because if someone's going to judge you and someone, someone yeah. is always going to dislike your stuff. Well, no one's yeah. judging us and everyone likes our stuff. That's absolutely true. All 20 viewers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But putting yourself out there is, is, you know, you just practice, uh, you just got to practice that and get better. Right. Yeah, no, right? For sure. So I put, I put this thing, this video of me eating this Arctic Roadrunner burger on TikTok, a couple of views, handful of views, nothing, yeah. nothing special. I put it on Facebook. And it blew up. Yeah. I put it in the right groups. There's a group called Anchorage to Go. And a couple of other like Anchorage and or slash Alaska based uh like restaurant groups where yeah. all we do is like talk about what we had to eat, you know, this week or where we're going or recommendations or whatever for, you know, people who are coming in tourists and stuff like that. It blew up hundreds of views, thousands of views, all this engagement, questions, comments, like, who is this guy? Where'd yeah. you come from? This was hilarious. Blah, 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 blah. Are you gonna do a second one? So a week later I went to Weebies yeah. uh on the south side. And it got my second favorite burger. This quickly became a series. Yeah. Justin's favorite burger. And there's like a top five. And so I got their their super bacon burger and I did it again. Twice as many, you know, tw yeah. twice twice the engagement, essentially. Yeah. So that's an important thing about entrepreneurship is that you have to find your audience. Yep. And it wasn't on TikTok for me. It yeah. was on Facebook. And it just blew up. And I kept doing this again and again and again. And then kind of like with the graphic design thing where they started reaching out to me 
to do their logos and stuff like that or campaigns, projects, restaurants would reach out to me and say, hey, nice. I saw your stuff. Do you want to come and, uh, you know, we'll comp you um, to review. Nice. Right? Um, and so... Well, I am hungry today. Well, <laughs> exactly. I, I do need to eat. Um, and so this it was really cool because then this, this became a thing where I was no longer... Um, just kind of like going to places, no one knows who I am, and you know, I get my yeah. food and I go review it on a whim. Restor- some restaurants, I mean, I still do that, of course, yeah. but like some restaurants are like, hey, um, we love your stuff, we think it's great, I think you could be an asset to us, right? Yeah. And so this place in Eagle River, I don't know if you guys know of it, called The Jerk Spot. No, but I would you know love that? to. Is oh, it? That spot's amazing. It's amazing, right? It 100%. sounds good. It's 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 amazing Caribbean. Oh, um, you, so you so cannot... yeah, so back when you know. They were, I mean, they didn't have the brick and mortar on Eagle River. They were just a, um, um, you know, they're at the Saturday market, right? They had a little, what do you call it? Vendor. They're a vendor at the Saturday market. Yeah. And um, that's when they hit me up. They're like, hey, you know, we like your stuff. You want to come and blah, blah, blah. So I went there and and what they told me, this was what this was when KTUU got a hold of me. Yeah. Um, because they love this story so much. They were like, dude, your review of the jerk spots food helped boost their revenue by over 200 percent nice and i was like yeah really i i literally just got my crusty phone and i just recorded myself eating yeah and people just thought it was it was refreshing it was entertaining you know like i was yeah. masked up and so it was like okay we can still go and have good food yeah but sometimes like places need that like like yeah. if they're just a vendor at the saturday market or maybe they're just like a small food truck starting out like right. nobody knows who you are like how do yeah. they even, if you're in a food truck how do they even find you right and that's right kind or of if you're thing. just a vendor like how do they find you you're not you're not you don't have the brick and mortar you don't you're not in a building a set location right so like if you're just in a food truck here and there every once in a while never a set spot again mm-hmm. like how do they find you so right make, so sometimes stuff like that, like not even sometimes, like stuff like that helps. So like, mm-hmm. man, people, you don't know this. Like you're just on your couch. You're going to the same restaurants all the time. Right. You're going taking the same takeout or DoorDash if that's mm-hmm. that's even worse, right? You're, then yeah. you're always on your couch. Like people need to be out there like shouting these businesses out. Like yeah. please go here. You guys just don't know what you're sleeping on. It's like the hidden gem. The hidden gem. Like, please go. Please support these people. They're like a local right. restaurant. They're local. A business. Right. Like, man, they're trying to do something they love and, man, help them out so they can do it. And, yeah. You know? And, and like I said, I mean, places, places need that. Yeah. Um, so we're getting pretty close to the end of our hour. Yeah. It's going to bring, we're going to hit on TikTok real quick. This is our new segment where our guest, does their favorite TikTok dance? Oh dear God! <laughs> That'd be fun though, right? <laughs> That'd be sick. Actually, that, that, we're gonna start pulling that one on people. Um, so, like we said at the beginning, you know, Justin, you're like the jack of all trades. You're doing everything. You have yeah. so many ventures while having just the regular nine to five, yeah. having you know the beautiful daughter, raising kids, mm-hmm. and just being a dad on top of everything. Yeah, um, and I'm so impressed, like inspired by you. Thank you. Um, the only thing I think could make you just a little bit better is joining Drew and I at six a.m. Jujitsu. All right, at Legacy Jujitsu Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. Um, um, and we will <laughs> save you a spot. Um, but man, just thank you for coming on. This Thanks one was really me. important for me. Um, you know, we, you know, obviously the mediocre grappler podcast. You know, like we're about local grappling, and you know, we're gonna hit on some MMA and do this. But we also wanted to make it so we could have like local business owners, local artists, mm-hmm. public figures. And all that on, and not just focus specifically on like the grappling or jujitsu community, mm. but have a little bit of everything. And kind of like you're doing with the Alaska Eats is right. like, man, we want to shout local people out doing good things in the community. For and sure. to me, you're one of those people. Thank you. And to have you on as the first non grappling related guest um, is just a big thing for me. And again, yeah. I just appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you having me, man. It's, it's been an honor. You know, when you first came to me and we're like, hey, man, I have this idea. You want in on it? Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, so a lot of people, uh, <laughs> our viewers probably don't know, our listeners don't know, is um, Justin was actually going to be like the original producer behind the scenes and editing. I knew, uh, you know, we talked, we reconnected once I moved back, uh, yeah. found out he does uh, some, like I knew he did the Alaska Eats and some other ventures, but it, it came out while we were uh, sitting down at a local place that he does podcast editing. Mm-hmm. And if I could just make my life a little bit easier and have someone handle that for me. Yeah. Um, but as you guys have now found out, like Justin's hands are like, they're more than full. Like his, yeah. his plate's full um, and just times just didn't necessarily line up. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and again, even one more reason, like I wanted to get you in here so you could still be a part of it somehow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, of course it worked out because now we got uh, Drew behind the camera yes, and sometimes sir. in front of the camera. But Drew's back there and doing great things, editing. Um, Absolutely. And like I said, it all worked out. And like I said, I mean, you're doing great. It was what we all want to hear. Yeah. And we want to see see more of it. Yeah, and, it and we wish you wish you luck going in the future, and we hope to have you back on because yeah. we could go on about Marvel forever. Ever. And a, a fun fact I didn't know was uh, your dad's a professional painter. Yeah. Like I wanted to touch on that um, to find out about a little bit about that, but I said I mean, there's so yeah. much that just doesn't fit into an hour. Right. Um, but again, that leads it so you have to come back on eventually. It'll be a and, part two, yeah. And I look forward to it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Thanks Justin. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Yeah.